everyone, welcome back to another video. I just did that to wake myself up, it's 7 p.m. And I just trained earlier. Um, this video is all about running. And uh, well, a lot of you know my running is shocking. Absolutely shocking. So what better way than to come down to an expert and uh, get it sorted. Um, and also for you guys to see a few issues that I do have, which I don't mention a lot, but uh, it will be great to have um, an expert opinion to help with that and of course give you guys some tips as well if you're like me you are big over 100 kilos you hate running hopefully by the end of this video you would end you would be motivated to go out and run uh so yeah <laughs> so i've cool. got ben here that you know awesome ben who is uh, hopefully going to um the gauntlet has been laid. I'm gonna. Yeah. We're, we're gonna have a look at your running, your, check your feet out, and yeah. um, see if we can give you a, a little bit of pointers to help you enjoy it more. Yeah. So if I, I do a, if I do another video of me running, it looks wrong. We'll all blame him this time. <laughs> just saying. Um, yeah. Just just introduce yourself to everyone. Explain. Okay. Yep. So I'm Ben Levacon. I am a barefoot movement coach. I have coached over a thousand runners over the last decade and had the pleasure of introducing thousands of people to Vivo Barefoot Shoes. So by reconnecting people with their feet and helping them to move better, we can maximize the vitality that we can get, the health benefits out of simple things like walking and I say simple, running. So let's do that. Let's check out yeah, your walking, so check out your running and check out your feet. Yeah. So it'd be fun to see um, all the, all the um, things I have to work on to, to improve. So yeah, this well, should be interesting. Punches and cuddles. I'll be giving you more cuddles and punches. We'll see, we'll see how that goes. Yeah, so if you enjoy the video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, make sure you subscribe. So uh, what are we doing first? Let's check you out on uh, walking first. We'll do oh, walking yeah, yeah, that's good. Running. Yeah, yeah. Walking that's fine, good. yeah. So here we go. We've got Obi walking on the treadmill. We're going to check out his walking technique and then check out his running technique. And we're also using some Arion insoles, which are in-shoe plantar pressure um, measuring devices, which are gonna give us some information about all different running biomechanics parameters. Okay, so let's go. Let's turn the treadmill up. Obi's feet as he's running now. Yeah, so what we're seeing is predominantly he's got a four foot strike and there is not a huge amount of loading going on all the way throughout into his heels. And by the way, we can see that he's not loading all the way across into his arches there. So he doesn't have completely flat feet. I'm suspecting at this moment. We will see if that's uh, corroborated when we check him out on the pressure plate. Let's go there. We'll do that. So now... So this is you walking and now what we're looking for in skillful walking and running is upright posture. We are all subject to the laws of gravity. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense for us to be upright, certainly when walking. Yeah? As soon as we start to lean, our lever length can increase. As in, when I lean forward, one tends to stride out ahead mm -hmm. in order to uh, catch yourself as it were. So the more you lean, the more you stride out. Now, this is more applicable to um, running than walking, but a lot of people still walk mm -hmm. with a leaning posture as it were. So it's lovely to see that you're very nice and upright there. Yeah, so that's number one. Number two is looking at your rhythm. So what I'm gonna do is, let's stop that. I'm gonna find my metronome on here and sink your feet to the metronome. Good. 
Good, so that's 106 steps per minute there. Now, the general recommendation for walking is about 120 steps per minute, so it's a little bit quicker than that. Now, what that does is, if you can imagine, when we take a longer stride, we are reaching out ahead, which is potentially increasing the impact forces going into our heels, our shins, our hip, our lower back. And this is even for walking, but of course we do plenty of steps every day. So if we can make any kind of um, improvements on the way that we walk, of course that's gonna have a big impact because we do so much walking. Mm -hmm. So if we can change our rhythm from 105 and a long stride out there mm -hmm. to 100. 10, 115, because of course there's a bit of room for maneuverability, especially when we're tall and we've got long legs, mm -hmm. so that we're landing a little bit closer to ourselves. What that will do is reduce that impact force going into our heels, into our, into our balls as we spring off, shins, knees, hip, lower back, and make it into more of a fluid movement. You know, your feet are a bit turned out there, but not hugely, not hugely out. Mm -hmm. It's still worth thinking about walking with feet slightly straighter forward. You know, something in between the inside of our foot being a straight line and the outside of our foot being a straight line is kind of natural for walking and running. And actually the faster that we go, the more important that it is that we get our foot in and are tracking straight ahead. Right. Yeah? Right. So this is running at 12. Now, I don't know if you were doing that on purpose for like my benefit, because before we spoke, you said that you have, you sometimes slip into a bit of a heel strike when you're running, mm -hmm. but you're definitely not here. That's midfoot, pretty much flat foot strike. And we can corroborate that with the Arion insoles. Um, I think but, so there, that's contact. And again, your posture is not bad. We've got, you know, a slight lean at the hip, but you know, nothing excessive. Mm -hmm. Uh, you probably still haven't quite made contact with the ground there. That is the real contact, which mm -hmm. is loading. Mm -hmm. And you've got a bent knee, you're pretty upright, you're landing under your body, you've got quite a nice heel pull, mm -hmm. actually, as in your heel height at 12 kilometers an hour um, is about knee, it's going to about knee height. Okay. Yeah, which is about right. Of course, it depends okay. a little bit on how long people's legs are, but yeah. roughly knee height at that speed is good. Way down. And then stop on the thing. And then we've got an aligned posture. So this is good. Heel pull is quite nice up to knee height. Um, yeah looking pretty good there. You're not reaching out and you've got a bent knee on, land, on loading. Let's have a look at your rhythm when running. And again, we're being a bit harsh here because we've taken you out of your comfort zone and asked you to run at a pace that you wouldn't normally yeah. run at. Um, but if we say... Okay, good. All right, fine. So again, it's not bad, we're at 165, um, but walking 120, running 180 is always the goal, irrespective of how fast that we go. And then when it comes to sprinting, we can get, Michael Johnson, 240 steps per minute. You know, it's four steps a second. Yeah. Crazy fast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even for long endurance running, we still want to have that rhythm of 180 beats per minute because it helps to keep our lever length short. Let's have a look at the quick one. So here we were at, I think we went to 17 kilometers an hour. Not bad, not bad. So you can see it looks like you're coming in just on your heel mm -hmm. there. But only slightly, and again, we'll check with the Arion because on that it still said that you were coming in four foot. It's probably quite tricky to actually feel exactly how your foot's landing mm -hmm. in those because they've got quite a lot of yeah, cushion. They got a lot of cushion in yeah. there. They've got a lot of padding. Yeah. So we can see now we've gone into a slight heel strike, but our posture is still pretty upright. 
With the heel strike, it's a slight overstride, ideally, rather than landing there, we're landing there. Mm -hmm. Then all of that energy, all of that effort that you're putting is going into propelling you forward rather than braking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice heel pull. Again, we could be slightly tighter, slightly further round and through at that point. That would take uh, a lot of butt kicks. <laughs> yeah. We are about to check Obi's feet out on a 3D scanner. This is our volumental scanner. So it's going to scan your feet and then compare them to a database and give us a um, 3D image of the foot and also various different measurements. Interesting. So it's telling us that you've got a size 47 left foot and a 46 right foot. Yeah. So one foot. One foot is a size bigger than the other. <laughs> and we'd have to make sure that you are within the uh, within the boxes. We can okay. always do it again if you like. Interesting. Just to make sure. Um, Actually, saying that, I feel one side was always feels tighter. Hence, why if you notice that this side has more of that on there. Yeah. The totally. Right side. The toes are definitely yeah. more scrunched, clawed yeah. back on the left than the right. Yeah, I've noticed that the left. Uh, and I would also say that your left big toe is slightly more bent in towards yes. the other toes, as yeah. in valgus, yeah. as it were. Not vulgar. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll talk about perhaps why that is, mm -hmm. but definitely if one foot's bigger than the other, you've got to always fit the biggest foot in shoes. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. No, but a lot of us can't buy shoes. No, <laughs> I, I was saying, yeah. You know, my, my um, right foot's pretty much a size bigger than the left. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. And interestingly on that, according to that, um, your, so for sure, got quite long feet, mm. got quite wide feet, yeah. although they're only in the DE, they're not off the scale. Yeah. Arch height on the right, you're bang in the middle. Yeah. The left looks a bit lower. Really low, yeah. Yeah. yeah I noticed that. Instep height, again, right is higher than average, left is lower than average. Wide heels, both the same. Mm -hmm. Ball girth, quite large. <laughs> I guess the insight there is just to know that one foot is slightly bigger than the yeah, other. Yeah. And arch-wise, only the left arch is a lot lower mm. than the other one. So yeah. what we can also do, and it's, let's have a look at you on the plantar pressure plate and then we can see exactly how high your arches are and how much of them are in contact with them. Anyway, go for it, Obi. Let's just stand on there. Stand how you normally stand. There we go. Okay. Mm. Now, these are your feet. As you can, as you can see, yeah. they're pretty filled in. But yeah. that little bit there is your arch. Mm -hmm. And that one on the right foot kept wanting to kind of work. Yeah. You know? Um, and again, as I said, so many of us mm. are, or we're all kind of led to believe that flat feet are a pathological problem. Now, most non-Caucasians would have flatter feet, and I would argue even, you know, Caucasians who had spent more time barefoot mm. would have lower arches, and a, low, a lower arch is a more functional arch, yeah? Mm. Um, so if you look at people who've never worn shoes, their arches would all be lower than people who wore shoes. shoes. Oh. Yeah, now I say that, it's interesting because the science kind of gets confused about it because on the one hand, they'll go wearing cushioned shoes and arch support will give you flat feet. On the other hand, you know, you see a lot of people with high rigid arches. So could it be too short shoes? Could it be wearing shoes with arch support as we, as we, um, grow up when we're younger? Could it be all of those things that contribute to a high rigid arch? Who knows? Mm. I've spent the last 13 years trying to get a more mobile lower arch. Yeah. Okay. You know, to give me additional shock absorption. Yeah. Because yeah. the arch is a shock absorber. Um, okay. So looking at this, when we look at it, the skill of standing is an even balance mm. in each corner. Yeah. So 25% in each corner. And you've got more weight on your left yes. leg than your right. Yeah. Yeah? It's yeah. interesting. You also relax on my left side. Yeah, totally. And you're standing, yeah, stand I like that. that. I noticed that a lot. 
Yeah. yeah. So you've got to even that up. Yeah. You know, that's the uh, take home because this is the thing, how we stand is mm. definitely going to affect our anatomy as well. Mm. So it's important when standing to even ourselves up, feel that weight distribution in mm. our feet, which you can do on there in a sec, um, in order to get even. Yeah. Now the next bit, the X is the peak pressure and you've got the peak pressure kind of actually on the sort of uh, base of your fifth met head. So it's like the beginning of the ball of your little toe, mm -hmm. as it were. So it's just that supinated posture. Now, generally athletic males are generally a bit supinated, stood on the, with weight on the outside of our, our feet. Yeah. Um, and of course, having been told that we've got flat feet and we over pronate, ankles roll in, we want to put more weight onto the outside yes, of our yeah, feet, yeah. yeah? So this is what's going on. Now, can you tell me the glare, there's a glaring thing that is missing from here? My toes? Correct. <laughs> you have no toes. Oh, wow, okay. So I'm not putting any pressure on them. <laughs> no, no. When you look, if we look at the video, there you go, look, yeah. that's, we've got, we've got big toes just kicking in. But, you know, again, so many of us, we're just disconnected from mm. feet and toes, mm. narrow toe boxes on shoes, toe spring, yeah, spend your whole life with your toes way. up in the air. Yeah, well, yeah. that's not good for anything. Oh, you know, okay. there's, there's, there's no reason to have our toes up in the air. It's a legacy yeah. from old stiff leather shoes where you would have to have a little bit of toe spring in the shoe because mm. otherwise you'd scuff the front of the shoe mm. as you tried to walk forward. Um, not really, uh, not really necessary in modern footwear. Okay, so we'll do it again now. Mm -hmm. Now, this time, if you put your hands down by the side and just feel, mm -hmm. move around a little bit and feel, exactly, just feel how the weight is moving through your feet. This pressure plate has 4,000 sensors in it. Your feet have got 200,000. Right. So if you close your eyes, you've got one of these built into your feet. If you, all I'm saying is to just tune into the pressure right. sensors mm. in your feet so that you can feel what this is visually showing you. Interestingly, now we've mentioned that it's important to have toes, you're getting the X, which is the peak pressure point onto your big toe. Right. Now on this, look what, if you really try, try don't lean forward, try mm. to keep roughly 25% 25, in yeah. each corner. So again, don't easy on the left to right because we had a little bit more on the left hand yeah. than the right. So allow yourself to put a little bit more weight on your right hand side. And of course, there could be things going on in your hips. You know, you could have a slightly tighter. What? This right side is tighter yeah. than the left. Okay. Um, and I find that um, I have to work on my hip flexors. Exactly. So they, because they're very tight. Absolutely. Yeah. I hear you. So that could even be pulling your pelvis up and giving the appearance that that leg is slightly shorter than the other one. Oh, right. You know? And equally, standing with all your weight on one leg mm. will also not help. Right. In your pelvic alignment. Okay. You know, although again, the forces going through your body when you're sprinting and doing the things with the heaviest weights mm. will have definitely have an influence in terms of total load you know we stand and we walk a lot right so that can also even though the forces immediately are nowhere near as high over time it can still have an influence on us mm. right so whack that big toe down pin it as hard as you can without try not to let the forefoot leave what i'm what i'm hoping to see there is that for you to see is that your arch comes up slightly mm -hmm. when you absolutely pin your big toe down. Right. So we can see it a little bit there. Yeah. Yeah. When the big toe pins down, you're preparing, it's preparing the foot for shock absorption. Mm -hmm. So by pinning the big toe down, the foot does that mm -hmm. rather than actively doing that with the foot and then lifting the first met hat as in the ball of the big toe right. and the big toe off the floor. Mm -hmm. So on that one, we can uh, do that. So, you know, so if you had a fairly even weight distribution before, but we were mm. just getting a bit of a peak pressure in there and we had no toes. Now we've got a more even weight distribution, 25, 20, 23, 31. So still a little bit more on that left heel, mm. but it's far more even. Yeah. And we've got the peak so. pressures onto the big toes. Yeah, that's interesting. 
Yeah. Mm. Now, the other thing that is interesting is you could definitely do um, foot strengthening exercises to get even stronger big mm -hmm. toes mm -hmm. and having super strong big toes is not going to slow you down as a sprinter or in anything else that you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let's show you a few of those, I think. Yeah. Okay. So number one is doing the finding center as we did before. So just feeling that weight move through your feet and coming to a even pressure, mm. yeah? Next is can we do some coordination things like pinning the big toe down? Can we move them separately? Big toe down and the other one's up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's let's do these with feet um, slightly straighter yeah, forward as well. Automatically. Uh, you know what? That's just going to be a habit. Yeah. Can we lift those up? Yep. Yeah. And then the other way around. Oh, no way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I could do it on the right. You got it on the right. So you got to you got to just practice it on the left. And oh, okay. because there you go. Because um, then we've got a little bit of, of kind of uh, torture. <laughs> so this is, can you pin the little ones out and get the other one back? Yeah. Yeah, and we're actually trying to get range. You see you're there right now. Yeah. We're trying to get range in that ball. There you go, that one. Yeah. Okay. It's just a nice stretch for the um, extensors in the top of the foot. Mm -hmm. But by creating, by the sensation is reminding your brain you've got a big toe. Okay. So that pain is not, I say pain, sensation, just mm -hmm. that feeling in your foot mm -hmm. is helping to recreate or reconnect the pathway so that you'll be more easily able to control your big toe. Yeah. Yeah. As in, I, some people can't do any of this mm -hmm. at all, especially um, older people that, um, you know, so you physically get down on the floor mm -hmm. and bend them with your fingers in the first right, place. Right. Yeah? Okay, so we've done big toe back, then let's do little toes back. Yeah, nice. And you can get a bit of a stretch all along the top of your foot there. If you put your heel down, actually, you'll get more of a... That's it, that one. Well, that feels nice on the top of the foot. <laughs> we want to do squishing mm -hmm. and splaying. Okay. So it's how wide can you get your feet? And the actual, the act of squishing helps um, big abductor hallucis, I would say, which is that muscle down the inside there, that. Mm. Performance coaches that I know that are very into um, foot performance, as it were, mm -hmm. do resistance bands on these. Yeah. They'll have a resistance band attached to their big toe and they'll be pulling it out against the resistance band. Right. Yeah. So there's never ending kind of progressions with those things. But a, a one that is helpful for spreading toes is literally putting a finger in between your toes. And that can be... It's a bit of a bugger to get them in in the first place. Um, but doing that yeah. definitely can help to, uh, it helps to spread the toes and there are of course toe spaces and things like that that you can use as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and <laughs> once you, uh, once you start to enjoy that, <laughs> yeah. then, you know, you can, you can be sort of mobilizing your ankle at the same time as kind of doing a bit of a figure of eight with the forefoot to get your midfoot as well. Okay. Um, <laughs> <Very> <laughs> Just doing calf raises up as you normally do them on your balls mm -hmm. is good. But if you want to really get your, so you know the flexor hallucis longus is the big, is the, is the long big toe muscle. The long big toe muscle is actually here. It's there. Good stuff. Again, it's handy, it's handy having the bar because yeah. you can control the amount of your body weight that you're putting on there. I do know 
people who can get all the way up on the end yeah. and stand. Oh, okay. Tough, but those are good. That's a, a few little insights into good little reconnection exercises yeah. for the feet. Okay. And of course, jumping and plyometrics barefoot mm. would be helpful as well. It's a little bit quicker. And just remember the soft knees cue. Yeah. Excellent. All right, let's go just slightly quick. It's funny, when you walk at that speed, you look like you're walking slowly. <laughs> So even just a slightly quicker rhythm should help with the softer knee. Yeah. And I'm sure now that you're in the barefoot shoe, a, a thinner shoe, mm. even though your walking was good before, yeah. definitely better than most who are wearing a big cushioned heel, right. now you will be landing just slightly closer right. to your centre. And I'd be interested there's way less pronation at the back. It's going to film you that to show you. Now, one of the best things that you can do for big toe strength as well mm -hmm. is to just pin it. When you're in the stance phase, mm -hmm. phase so just as you're the, the centre of mass rolls through your foot onto the big toe, split second where your big toe just engages. Mm -hmm. Now you think about it, you're lifting your heel while your big toe is pinned down, you're doing a bicep curl on your flexor hallucis longus. Yes. Yeah? So we're strengthening that big toe muscle. Of course we don't want to overdo it, mm -hmm. it's just a hint. It's just a big toe using, big toe working. And again, that will help to get the most that we can out of uh, our walking. Let us try running with this rhythm, even at um, a very slow speed of about 10. So even, even when you start to trot, yeah. have a go, just think lift, 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 lift on that beat. Lift, not land is a really important cue because you're mm. thinking Staying light but it's free. Slow there, but that's alright. How's it feel in those? Yeah, it feels much different. You feel, you look a lot lighter. Yeah, it feels a lot lighter. I mean, it looks like you're floating. Definitely not going up and down as much because you've got a quicker rhythm at this pace. Quite left as well. In your mind, say lift, 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 lift. lift. you have a slightly longer kind of contact time on one leg than the other. Yeah, Okay. on the right. Exactly. Yeah. So, part of the benefit of the metronome is it'll keep you even. Yeah. So thinking, lift, 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 stops that slight asymmetry, yeah? Stop. 
slightly shorter stride, so just think lift, where are we at speed? Where are we on five? But we're just going to look at stride length there and say we were reaching out and leg is very straight in the front. Of course your stride length is slightly shorter so mm -hmm. we're landing closer to ourselves. You haven't fully extended your knee, I wouldn't say it's soft there but it's, it's straight, it's not overly extended. Um, this is good stuff. And walking should be more fun. Slightly quicker rhythm should feel a lighter, nicer, more beneficial thing to do. And then running, let's compare. So again, we were pretty good. Posture's pretty good, quite upright. Pretty flat foot landing, fairly close to us. Fairly close to a center. We weren't bad, it was just the rhythm. Mm -hmm. It was a little bit slow. So we were taking a longer stride than is beneficial to maximize our elastic recoil and free energy, ultimately. It's just a closer, everything's tighter. Yeah, it's marginal, but you're landing just slightly closer. You know, you haven't made any contact before that. So whereas a frame before that, the heel would have made contact with the shoe. Now, you're getting one frame later, closer to your center, more efficient. And there'll be less asymmetry as well when the rhythm's quicker. Okay. It boils down to, Reconnecting with feet, mm. practicing those squishing and splaying exercises, practicing the strength of the big toe, as in the raises all the way off, yeah. or just hanging on a step with your big toe. Mm. For walking, slightly quicker rhythm, 120 steps. For running, 180 steps, again, slightly quicker. Mm -hmm. that, and, and practicing your very specific heel pull Right. Butt kick, but making sure your heel does actually kick your butt mm. rather than being a little bit behind you to make sure you keep that short lever length when going all out. Yeah, it's a lot to kind of take in. Indeed. Uh, but it's good because now I kind of know um, some information that I've gotten that obviously you've just made me aware that. It's not as bad as I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. um, being flat-footed is not a curse. I think that's like the biggest thing. So a lot of us think that, oh, it's over. We can't do a lot of things. And um, it's nice that you are, to have a professional teach me and teach a lot of us certain things that, that, that we need to, that we can do. The, the exercise with the toes and stuff. I would never have done that. I knew about like trying to grab paper from the floor. Yeah. But the toes stuff, again, is really interesting because Again, like I said, I've never thought of something like that. The you clicks, can strengthen your big toes. all the clicks, yeah, stuff like that. Um, the clicks running and strides, cute. yeah. Because being tall, normally we are. It's kind of like yeah, take longer strides, but mm -hmm. man, it's kind of like no, no. Learning to take shorter strides, you know. Stride so. length increases behind us, yeah, rather than in front, right. and that's the bit. So it's get that heel up even higher. Yeah. but still land underneath ourselves rather yeah. than stride out. I yeah. think that's yeah. where the confusion goes. Mm -hmm. um, and flat feet, you've got lower arches. Lower arches are the goal, they're yeah. not the problem. Flat foot is a pathology which shouldn't really be used unless someone's in horrible pain and they've got a, you know, a real genuine issue with their foot. Right. Yeah, that was awesome. Thanks so much. I've learned a lot and I uh, hope you guys have learned something as well. Um, definitely be implementing a lot of these, so hopefully when I come back and see you again. Yeah, yeah. Be, uh, slightly. All, I'll be, all, all I'll be thinking about every time is that I'm running is beep, 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 beep. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Nice one, Obi. Thank you so much for having me. Um, awesome. Yeah, it's been good. Look I'm forward to round two. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm going to go sleep. <laughs> Peace out. Yeah.